to Judith, the story of the Israelite woman whose amazing courage and strong religious belief led to the destruction of the Assyrians by the Israelites. Judith is a paradoxical character. She takes charge of the situation, assuming a man's role, using her feminine wiles to accomplish her task. But she uses this in such a way that is unbelievable that she is a faithful and pious woman. She is a widow. She has a maid who is somewhat invisible during the story. Judith is not a hero even though the leaders of the Jerusalem identify her as such, she consistently names God as the hero who saved the people. Judith is simply God's servant who carries out God's plan. The story of Judith is a novella, somewhat longer than a short story, but shorter than a novel. The author has taken great effort to show that this story is fictional. Historical figures are presented in the wrong time and place. The historical events are deliberately combined and rearranged. The purpose of the story is not to outline historical facts, but to highlight the faithfulness of God. A God who can always be counted on to rescue the people in both ordinary and extraordinary ways. The book of Judith is difficult to date, but it is estimated to be between 167 and 63 BC. It is punctuated by prayer. Our story begins as Nebuchadnezzar has conquered King Arphaxad and is boasting of his accomplishments. He is then reminded that certain nations would not join him in his battle, so he sends Holofernes, the general, in revenge and with the order to slay those nations. Israel is one among those nations. After Holofernes has conquered and most of King Nebuchadnezzar's enemies, he celebrates. His rejoicing is cut short when he learns that Israel will fight against him. Holofernes calls for an Amorite to come and let him know all about the Israelites. The Amorite tells Holofernes, as long as the people pray and walk before their God, they will not be defeated. But if they sin and turn away, they can be slaughtered. This is the beginning. We won the battle! We won, we won, yay! We conquered King Arphaxad! Hail our king! Hail our king! Well done! The enemy has been destroyed and we have taken over his city and all his possessions. All nations will know that I am king. Yes, yes. 
revenge on those nations that did not respond to my call to war against King Arthabad. Go call Holofernes, the general of the army. Call Holofernes. Call him. Here he comes. Thus says the great king, the lord of the earth, go forth, take 120,000 infantry and 12,000 cavalry and proceed to all the land of the west. And when you have conquered it, I will come and take possession. For as I will and by the strength of my kingdom, what I have spoken, I will accomplish by my own power. These are the nations to be destroyed. Go forth, go forth in my name. Go forth, go forth in my name. That the king is coming to all the nations. Go forth in my name. See have been devastated and destroyed. I have devastated all the territory for I have been commissioned, for I have been commissioned to destroy all gods of the earth so that every nation might bow down and worship Nebuchadnezzar and invoke him as the one God.
Bring me the rulers of the Moabites and Amorites so I can question them about these people who will not bow down but want to wage war against us. Tell me about these people who dwell in the mountains. How large is their army? And what does their power and strength consist? Who has set himself as their king? And why have they refused to meet me like the other nations? My lord, please listen to the report from your servant. I will tell you the truth about this people. Their God is with them at all times. He guides, directs, and goes before them. He parted the Red Sea with them to escape Pharaoh. She returned and swallowed up all the chariots and men. As long as they prayed to their God and obeyed him, they received his blessings. take you to the hill country. You will not die until you are destroyed along with the Israelites. came down and took Achior back to Bethulia. All the elders of the city gathered around to see and hear him speak. Tell us everything that happened to you in Hall versus Cop Camp. 
told them about your God protecting you as long as you were obedient. And that he would protect you as long as you obeyed him. Lord God, look at their arrogance. Have mercy on the faith. Have mercy on those in their abject state. And let your favor be upon the faces of all those who are consecrated to you. Come to my home to celebrate you. To celebrate, I reassure you and praise you for all that you've said to the Assyrians. to various locations and surround the Israelites. Post men at the water springs so that they can't get water. We will wait and see what they will do when they are thirsty. The time is 34 days uh, later. Uh, uh, uh. We are desperate since the Assyrians have cut off our water supply. Our children have had no food or water for 34 days. How can we last? Where is God? Let us go seek Uzziah. Ask him to surrender to Holocaust.
to see us. She is highly honored among our people. So we should go. Judith is a wealthy widow. Due to the grand inheritance of all her husband's properties, which at that time was a rarity for any woman. Thus, she was greatly respected by all. Judith is a deeply religious, God-fearing woman, prayerful in every manner. Her lovely and beautiful ways radiate from her innermost being. She depends on God to guide and direct her. What will Uzziah and the elders hear from Judith? You, rulers of the people, what you said to the people today is not proper. When you promised to hand over the city to our enemies at the end of five days, unless within that time God comes to our aid, you interpose between God and yourselves the oath that you took. Who are you that you should have put God to the test these days? No, my brothers, do not anger the Lord our God. God is not man, that he should be moved by threats, nor human, that he may be given an ultimatum. All that you have said is with good sense. And no one can gainsay your words. The people, however, have been so tortured with thirst, they have forced us to speak to them as we did. But now, we have bound ourselves by an oath that we cannot break. But now, God-fearing woman that you are, pray for us that the Lord will send rain to fill up our cisterns, lest we be weakened still further. I will do something that will go down from generation to generation among the descendants of our race. Stand at the gate tonight to let me pass through with my maid. Before you will surrender the city to our enemies, the Lord will rescue Israel by my hand. You must not inquire as to what I am doing, for I will not tell you until my plan has been accomplished. With peace, and may the Lord God go before you to take vengeance on our enemies. Lord God, of oh my forefather Simeon, you put a sword into his hand to take revenge on those who have attacked the young virgin. You forbade such, and therefore the people rose up and slaughtered those who have perpetrated such a horrible deed. Oh God, oh God. Hear me also, a widow. Here are the Assyrians, riding themselves on horse and rider, boasting of their infantry, trusting in shield and sword. Shatter their strength in your might and crush their force in your wrath, for they have resolved to profane your sanctuary, to defile the tent where your holy name resides, and to overthrow with iron the form of your altar. Please, Lord God, hear my prayer. Let my guileful speech bring sorrow and loss on those who have planned dire things against your covenant and your holy temple.
She lays aside the cloth and dresses in her finest clothes, bracelets, sandals, earrings. She makes herself very beautiful. She fills a basket with cruets of oil and wine, roasted grain, fig cakes, bread and cheese. Then they go out to the gate. Uzziah and the others are there watching and praying. May the God of our fathers bring you to favor and make your undertaking a success. For the glory of Israel and the exaltation of Jerusalem, order the gate of the city open. Open the gate. Fernandez the general. I will show him the route by which he can ascend and take possession of the whole mountain. We will take you to the general. We will stand before him and have no fear. We will treat you well. Take courage, lady. Have no fear in your heart. Never have I harmed anybody who has chosen to serve Nebuchadnezzar. No harm will come to you. Rather, you will be treated with respect. But tell me, why have you fled from them and come to us? In any case, you've come to safety. Take courage. I spare your life tonight and in the future. Listen to the words of your servant, and let me speak in your presence. I will tell no lies to my Lord this night, and if you follow my words, God will give you complete success, and my Lord will not fail in any of his undertakings. Indeed, we have heard of your wisdom and sagacity, and all the world is aware that throughout the kingdom, you alone are competent rich in experience and distinguished in military strategy. As for us, your speech in your council, we heard it. He told us what he said to you about our people and our God. When we obey the Lord, we are blessed and he protects us. But when we sin against the Lord, he refuses to shield us from danger and death. But now, our guilt has caught up with us, by which we bring the wrath of our Lord upon us whenever we do wrong. Since our food gave out and our water ran low, we decided to kill our animals and to consume all of those things which God in his laws forbade us to eat. We used up the first fruits of rain and the tithes of wine and oil that we have sanctified. We sent messengers to Jerusalem to call that authority from the elders for the inhabitants that have also done those things. On the very day 
when their response reaches back to us and we act upon it. We will be handed over to you for destruction. Dear lady, you are so brave to come to us. We welcome you. Isn't she beautiful? So brave. Is she an example of the Hebrew women? When I, your handmaid, learned the this, I fled from them. God has sent me to perform such deeds with you so that people throughout the world will be astonished on hearing of them. Now, I will remain with you, my Lord, but each night I will go out to the road and pray to God. He will tell me when the Israelites have committed their crimes and then I will come and tell you so that you may go out with your whole force and not one of them will be able to defend himself. Dear lady, your words have pleased me. God has done well in sending you ahead of your people to bring victory to our arms and destruction to those who despise the Lord. If you do as you have said, your God will be my God, and you shall dwell in the palace of King Nebuchadnezzar and will be renowned. Prepare a table of food for her to eat and drink. Oh no, I will not partake of the food, lest it be an occasion of sin, but I shall be amply nourished by the things I brought with me. Suppose you run out of food. None of your people are here. As surely as you, my lord, live, your handmaid will not use a persuite until my lord has accomplished by my hand what he has done. <coughs> In the night watch, just before dawn, Judith arose and sent a message to Holofernes. Please give orders, my lord, to let your handmaid go out for prayer. So Holofernes ordered his bodyguard not to hinder her. Thus she stayed in the camp three days. Each night she went out to the ravine of Bethulia, where she washed herself in the spring of the camp. After bathing, she besought the Lord, the God of Israel, to direct her way for the triumph of his people. Then she returned to the tent, purified, and remained there until her food was brought to her each evening. On the fourth day, Holofernes gave a banquet for his servants alone. But he said to his servant, Go persuade the Hebrew woman in our care to come eat and drink with us. If we do not entice her, she will laugh us to scorn. The servant asked Judas to come and dine with Holofernes, as the Assyrian women do. This will be a joy for me until the day of my death. Who am I to refuse, my lord? Therefore, she proceeded to put on her festive garments and all her feminine adornments. Meanwhile, her servant went to spread the fleece on the ground that Holofernes' servant Bagoas had given her. Then Judith came in and reclined on it. The heart of Holofernes was in rapture over her, and his spirit was shaken. Drink and be merry with us. I will gladly drink, my lord, for at no time since I was born have I ever enjoyed life as much as I do today. She then took the maid had prepared and ate and drank in his presence. Holofernes, charmed by her, drank a great quantity of wine, more than he had ever imbibed on any single day of his life. When it grew late, his servants quickly withdrew. Bagoas closed the tent from the outside and excluded the attendants from the master's presence. They went off to their beds, for they were all tired from the prolonged banquet. Judith was left alone in the tent with Holofernes. He lay on the bed, for he was sodden with wine. She had ordered her maid to stand outside the bedroom and wait for her to come out, as she had done on the other days. Judas said she was going out for her prayer, as she previously said to Begoas. 
When all had departed, Jesus stood by all her debts and prayed. Then, approaching his bed and taking his sword, drew close. Judith grasped his head and said, Strengthen me this day, O God of Israel. Then, with all her might, she struck him twice in the neck and cut off his head. She rolled his body off the bed and took the canopy from the supports. Soon after, she came out and handed over the head of Holofernes to her maid, who put it in her basket. The two went off together as they were accustomed to do for prayer. They passed through the camp and reached Julia on the mountain. has not withdrawn his mercy from the house of Israel, but has shattered our enemies by my hand this very night. Here is the head. You call your man the general of the army. As surely as the Lord lives, who has protected me through the path that I for it was my faith that seduced Holofernes and led to his ruin. Blessed. Blessed are you, daughter 
of the Most High God among all women on earth. Blessed be the Lord God on earth. Guided your blow against the head of our enemies. May God make this resound to your everlasting honor. You risked your life when your people were being oppressed and averted our disaster by walking uprightly before God. happened, the people cheer loudly and the city resounds with shouts of joy. Thor is so moved after seeing all that the God of Israel has done, he becomes a believer in him. He was then circumcised and became a part of the house of Israel from that day forward. At daybreak, they hung the head of Holofernes on a post, took up their arms and went to the slopes of the mountains. The Assyrians saw the Israelites arrayed on the mountainside and yelled, The Israelites are attacking! They ran from tent to tent, awakening all. The Goas went to the tent of Holofernes and called, but received no response. When he entered the tent, he saw the headless body of Holofernes and screamed, ah! All the Assyrians began to run away. The Israelites attacked and conquered the Assyrians. Oh, 
the Israelites who returned from the slaughter took possession of everything that was left, and the vast plains were filled with the booty they had seized. The high priests and the elders came from Jerusalem to see for themselves the good things that the Lord had done for Israel, and to meet and congratulate Judah. God had answered their call. By the hand of a woman, they were saved. Long live Judith. Judith praised the Lord and sang and danced. All joined her in praising God in the victory. Long live Judith. Praise to you, Judith, for all that you've done. May your works resound throughout all of history. May God bless you forever and ever. Amen. Amen. For 30 days, the whole population celebrated. All the women of Israel gathered to see Judith, and they blessed her and performed a dance in her honor. She and the other women crowned with themselves with garlands of olive leaves. At the head of all the people, she led the women in the dance, while the men followed wearing garlands and singing hymns. Strike up the instruments, a song to my God with hymns. Chant to God to its symbols, a song I would sing to my God, exalt and acclaim his name, for the Lord is God. He crushes warfare and sets his encampment among his people. He snatched me from the hands of my enemies. The enemy came, but the Lord Almighty bore them. By a hand of a woman, he confounded them, a new him. I will sing to my Lord, let all your creatures serve you, because you spoke, and they were made. Praise and glory to God. His hand has saved his people. Praise God. Woo! 